Hey everybody, welcome to Smith Party of Six. I am Adriana Smith and this is our family's channel where I talk about homeschooling and just life generally rooted at home. So in today's video, I'm gonna teach you guys about how I put together our homeschool portfolios and um, more specifically, how to put together digital portfolios if you don't wanna have to do the hard copy. As a really quick side note, I filmed this video over multiple days. So you might see me in a different change of clothes or whatever as I'm talking about things and showing them to you just because I was filming some of it while I was doing the portfolio and then some of it afterward. So first of all you might be wondering why I even choose to do digital instead of just doing the physical copy of a portfolio. Our portfolio reviewer actually lives in a completely different part of the state. I could technically meet her if I wanted to uh, but it is a little bit far of a drive. I could also probably box up uh, our portfolios and send them but that would kind of be pricey for shipping um, and so I just choose to do a digital portfolio it's easier for me that way some of the things that we do throughout the year I'm tracking digitally anyways it means that I don't have to print off pictures it means I can include videos so there's lots of different perks to just going ahead and going the digital route but I'm assuming that if you've already clicked on this video then that means that you are interested in doing a digital homeschool portfolio anyway so we'll just go ahead and get right into it. So first things first when talking about homeschool portfolios, really we need to start talking about just the organization of all of your paperwork that your kids do throughout the year in general. I know that this probably isn't going to help you for this year. Hopefully you have some sort of organizational structure already in place, but if you choose to implement what we do in future years, I just want to go ahead and include this in the video. So first of all, any of our curriculum that comes in a book like for their worksheets, I just leave it where it is in that book because it's already in order what they did throughout the year right there for me so I can see from start to finish their progress and what was included. However, then we also have some like loose leaf type of worksheets or things where they've written online paper things like that. For those cases, I also have a three ring binder for each child that um, when they're done with their work, they will put it into a turn in tray for me to grade. In our state, we don't have to actually track their grades. So I'm not keeping scores in like a grade book or anything like that. But I just like to go over their work to make sure that they know exactly what they're doing. And if it's obvious that they're not quite getting a certain subject or if they have written out something and didn't do as well as I'd like for them to do on it, then I can make notes and give it back to them. That's the reason why we have the turn in tray. But once I have looked it over, graded it, put a sticker on it, if they did a good job, then I'll go ahead and put it into their three ring binder. Now their three ring binders I have organized by subject so that I can easily flip to a certain subject and see all the work that I have kept for that subject in the year. Now we also incorporate a lot of um, Charlotte Mason type principles into our homeschool and so there's certain work that doesn't have a paper for it. So for example when we're reading something they're going to do a narration after we're done reading it. I don't have any work for that. If I want to include a narration into their portfolio then I just kind of make a note in my lesson plan book that I want to um, type out that narration for the day or take a video of them doing that narration for the day so that then I can include that in their portfolio later. I also make sure to keep any artwork in their uh, three ring binders that they've done. It's wise to have a folder in your phone for pictures that could be included in a homeschool portfolio just so you don't have to go scrolling back through as you're trying to put it all together. That's something that I actually haven't implemented yet, but I'm definitely going to for this next year, just because it takes a lot of time to scroll back through the entire year's photos and pick out the ones that would be good to include. So it's easier if we uh, are taking pictures while we're out at what I would consider a field trip or anything educational that I could just go ahead, put those in a folder specifically in my phone for the portfolio so that then it will just be quick to look through later. Okay. So now that we've talked about general organization, the first part of really starting to put together your portfolio is to go back through all of that work and mark in some way ones that you're interested in putting into the portfolio. So I just start at the beginning and I start adding sticky notes anywhere in the pages that I think that might be a good thing to include. So for example, with math, you wanna show the progress that they've made over the entire year. So I'm gonna put a sticky note 
really far towards the beginning, maybe even like the first lesson that we did in that year to show what they were working on. I'm going to include any tests. So I'll put a sticky note with those. Um, if there's something that wasn't included on the test, but is interesting that they did, if your curriculum has them work with tangram pieces or uh, complete logic puzzles, anything like that, it might be good to either have pictures of those saved in your folder on your phone, or if it was something written to go ahead and sticky note those too. And at this point, I'm not really counting how many sticky notes that I'm putting on there or how many pages I'm considering putting in the portfolio. I'm just kind of going for it and marking anything that I think might be good to go ahead and include. Another thing to remember is that again, you're wanting to show progress in these subjects over the course of the year. So you might be including things that they didn't always do a stellar job on. So for example, we did the US states this year. So toward the beginning of the year, I started giving them them blank maps and just seeing how many they could fill out. So toward the beginning of the year, they were doing about like 10 or so, but now toward the end of the year, they almost have them all. My goal then when I am putting in those blank maps for their uh, geography work is to show their progress throughout the year. So toward the beginning, they weren't doing that great and that's okay. We still want to include those to show that they've come a long way. So once you have all of those possible pages marked, what you're going to do is go back through and start paring down. So you might notice, um, I'm just gonna use math as an example again. You might notice that you have several uh, pages showing them uh, doing addition with regrouping. You don't need several pages that show addition with regrouping. If it's on their test, you don't really need to show it in multiple other worksheets. So you can take out those sticky notes. Now, the number of pages that you're gonna wanna include really kind of depends on the portfolio reviewer. I just asked ours and she says that she likes to see uh, at least 10 to 20 samples. For most subjects, I fall right in between those guidelines there. For other ones like math, it was really hard for me to pare down because they did do a lot of math this year. And so I had a little bit closer to 30. So just whatever you feel really shows that progress and gives the portfolio reviewer um, a good taste of everything that they've learned throughout the year. Okay, so once you are done with that, you can go ahead and start scanning in. What I do, I have an Epson Workforce WF3620. It has Epson Connect software that um, I can access on my computer. And in there I can set up for it to have access to my Google Drive. Google Drive is where I'm going to be putting together this portfolio because it's really easy to send my reviewer a link from there. And then she'll just be able to see everything that I have in their portfolio folders. So I'm going to scan directly from my Epson into my Google Drive. So I'll show you here. When I uh, scan something in, it's going to go into this Epson Connect folder that it creates for me. But once I have everything scanned in over there, I rename it and then I move it into uh, whatever child's portfolio it needs to go into. So inside of each child's folder, I have a uh, subfolder set up. I have one for language arts, one for reading and literature, one for math, history, science and natural history, geography, and then I just have like an other folder just to put extra things that we have studied. Now in my um, other category here, some of the things that I include uh, are handicrafts, picture study, poetry, pictures from co-op, and then pictures from any trips that we might have taken as well. Your state might have specific requirements for the things that you need to teach, and you would want each of those things to be a different folder in the child's portfolio so that you can show off the work that they did in that specific required subject. Once I go in and name the files after I've scanned them into the computer, then I'm going to move them into whatever folder they correlate with. So for example here, in Alexia's folder, I have them numbered because I like for them to stay in a specific order. And then I could go in to her language arts folder, for example. And then you could see here, I have a picture of the curriculums that she used um, up at the top. She was finishing off level one at the beginning of the year and um, went into level two. And then I'm going to include all of the work scanned in there from the beginning. Now I order that 
by having a number here. So if this goes with the same lesson, then I'll put like 1A, 1B, those were in a lesson together. And uh, you can see here the assessment 2A, 2B, so that those also will stay together. So then as I scroll down here, then you can see all the work and any pictures that we took um, in here ordered by number and then given a name that kind of goes with it to let the portfolio reviewer know why it's there and what it's for. And after I scan it in, I go ahead and go in and rename each one. I give it like a number at the beginning just so everything stays in order the way that I want it to be. So this one is the ninth page that I've scanned in for Alexia's math. Um, so I go ahead and put a nine and then I'll just put like the basic gist of what it is. So like for um, example, this one is going to be adding money. I just hit OK and then I take it from my Epson Connect folder in my Google Drive and I drop it into the math folder of her por portfolio for the 2021-2022 year. So really even before scanning all of the work in, it's wise to go ahead and set up whatever folders that you're gonna want, how you want to organize um, their work in their portfolio so that once you scan them in, you can just move them directly into their folders. So that's just a really simplified look at what to do, but you really wanna give yourself several days to be able to do all of that and make sure that you can get it done before the portfolio needs to get turned in. Especially if this is your first year homeschooling, it might feel a little bit overwhelming to do all of it. So I would give yourself like an entire week before um, the portfolio needs to be turned in to make sure that you don't feel rushed um, and that you feel like you have adequate time to be able to scan all of it in, get it named, you know, choose uh, those pieces that you think would be the best to showcase what they've done. All right, and then finally, once your portfolio is completely put together in the way that you like it, then you are going to want to be able to share it uh, with whoever your reviewer is. So first of all, you're gonna need that person's email address. That is the easiest way to do it. You're gonna go over here, um, like off to the side. So here I'm in Alexia's portfolio. You're gonna go off to the side here uh, where it says manage access. And this box is going to pop up here. And it says share with people in groups. So you can add someone's email right here. Uh, so you'll put in your portfolio reviewer's email. You see, I already have my access right here and then our portfolio reviewer down underneath because I already sent these to her. But you're gonna go ahead and put their email right there and hit done. And it's gonna automatically send them um, an email with the link for that portfolio in it. So sharing the portfolio is really as simple as that. Uh, that's another thing that's really good with these digital portfolios not a whole lot of work to get it to the reviewer. So if this is your first time putting together a portfolio, feel free to email me with any questions or you can drop them in the comments down below. I would be glad to help in any way that I can. It's also a good idea to uh, reach out to wh whoever you've chosen to review your child's portfolio and ask them what they're looking for, what types of things that they like to see. A lot of times they're very kind to work with. It really just depends on who you get. And actually on that note, really quick, <laughs> When choosing a reviewer, it's really important to make sure that you choose somebody uh, who understands kind of what you're going for with homeschooling. So for example, I chose our reviewer because um, she understands Charlotte Mason homeschooling. And at the time we were doing, I mean, basically pure Charlotte Mason. Now we don't exactly, but I still definitely incorporate a lot of Charlotte Mason into our homeschool, like with handicrafts and uh, poetry and living books, narration, all of that. So I wanna make sure that our reviewer understands what I'm going for with all of that. So if you are a Charlotte Mason homeschooler or if you uh, like classical education or if you're an unschooler, it's important to make sure that you choose a reviewer who is going to get it and therefore review your portfolio fairly. All right, guys, but I think that that's all that I have for you today. Uh, don't forget if you have questions, really, I don't mind answering stuff at all. I like to be able to help out. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos like it. See you guys next time. Bye.